Good beautiful morning everyone. Today I've got a plan. Come on. Alright everyone, so welcome back to Garage Story. So, the plan is I want to see if I can get this thing to run today. Maybe not run, but I want to see if I can get spark and I want to see if I have good compression. So this mower has been outside there for maybe a year and a half and when I picked it up for free, the gentleman told me, I believe, that it had an issue with the governor or something like that, but I think it's got some electrical issues as well. So let's take a look. The seats, decent condition except for this corner here and that corner and that and that so it's kind of not exactly in decent condition but at first glance it doesn't look bad get this duct tape off of here this thing will look pretty good that's a little faded but the paint is overall pretty nice and orange he actually had all this covered with a piece of wood which i took off and now my decals are peeling so maybe i should have left there until i was ready to work on it uh the engine's a little faded all in all it's not bad looking for a free mower but here's where things get odd so our electrical system seems to be assisted by a uh, junction box. Actually, it's not assisted anymore. I think he was having issues with his safety switches maybe, as you can see all these pieces of metal added on here. So we've got electrical stuff going on. Yeah, so this wire is hooked in to a starter wire, which I'm not sure why. We've got this piece of wire here on a chain. No idea what all this is supposed to be. So I think I'm going to take it off because I don't think it's going to help me in my journey. So I don't know about the governor. That'll be interesting. But look here. This throttle has been um, hooked up a little bit differently. See how this bracket here is slightly bent? I don't know if you can see that. And the wire's running up here. Normally that wire would run into here and use this thing. So I'll probably try to put all that back to stock as much as possible. And you know, it could be one of those things where there was uh, issues with the um, carburetor that seemed like they were one thing, but they could have been a totally different issue in there. I don't know. But yeah, we've even got a Husqvarna oil filter on there. So either that's the OEM oil filter or it was um, changed and serviced well with Husqvarna parts. He does nothing. I guess for the purposes of today, I want to see if I can get power to it to crank it over. That may just be jumper cables to the starter solenoid, or I'm sorry, to the starter. I may pull the cover off of here and um, disconnect the grounding wire for my ignition circuit so that I can see if it'll actually function and spark properly. See if I can get spark and then if it can crank, see if I can get compression, and make sure the starter's working. So yeah, let's get to it. So the first step is going to be trying to hook it up to power and see what happens. I'm going to use the good old jumper cables to the deep cycle for this one. Okay, the key is still dead. Let's get the voltmeter and check. Oh, power meter is coming on. 702.4. So see what happens when you turn the key. Nothing. Make 
make sure the handlebars are out. Absolutely nothing there. So check my fuse. My fuse looks good. There's that fuse. I don't know if there's others. You know we've got safety switches coming in on each side. They sound like they're working. Just gonna do a quick check of wiring. Let's check and see if we can arc the solenoid. Let's find a screwdriver we don't like. Gloves on. Not a whole lot going on there. Sometimes it's hard to get enough power flow through all that. So I'm gonna see if I can jump the, solen the starter directly. All right, the starter works. I should check the oil at this point. There's definitely oil in there. It appears just a little bit over full. The crank's over okay. So we can we can try checking um, spark and compression now. Okay, so at this point I've decided I've got another battery down here. Um, one of these, I can't remember which, probably that one, that is still fairly good. So I'm gonna throw that in there and see if we can get some power through the system. Um, I may aid it with jumping it again, but it might make things work a little bit better. So I got a better battery in there. Now let's see if anything happens. Okay, my hour meter turns on. It's a good sign. I hit the key, nothing happens. So, I wanna check and see if the solenoid is getting power like it's supposed to. The harness is up in here so tight, I can't really get these down and out of the way. So, I wanna push these nodules down. Kinda get them out of here. Man, that is not going down. My problem is I can't get the harness where I can work on it very well. There we go. Now I can move the harness around a little bit more. See what's going on down here. What on earth? Oh, that would be my seat safety. So the seat safety has been blatantly chopped off. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. My solenoid is right here. So I'm gonna disconnect these and see if they're getting power. I turn the key. This guy glow. This on my ground. I really need to get some alligator clips for these things. And should be nothing here. When I turn the key, I want it to jump up. Okay, I'm turning the key, nothing's happening there on that one. So let me try the other wire down here. Turn the key. Okay, it's getting 12 volts to the solenoid. Okay. So now what I know is my key will turn on the electrical system as an hour meter will turn on and it is energizing the solenoid um, at the proper time. And I know the starter will crank over when powered directly. To me, this is all pointing to a bad solenoid. The next step is to put those wires back in, have the key in the run position, try arcing the solenoid again with the screwdriver because now we have hopefully a good enough battery to crank it um, and see, see if that works. That may or may not tell us a whole lot, um, depending on how good all our contacts are and if we can arc it well. It's an awkward spot. Um, but I might try to see if I have another solenoid. I'm already trying to figure out if I've got one. Uh, I might try to see if I have a solenoid that I can swap in there. So the key is in the run position. Let's see if we can arc the solenoid now and get it to actually crank over. That's good. Now let's um, check for spark and see if we're getting spark. So I did not get these pliers new, so I don't know exactly what they were designed for, but they work pretty well for trying to pull off fuel lines and stuff like that from fuel filters. And they also work fairly good for um, trying to pull off spark plugs and stuff, just cause they're round and you can kind of grab better. Just, I mean, it depends on the, depends on the circumstances. I don't know if I can get this one cause it's kind of a tight spot here. Uh, I might need to pull the guard off, but yeah, we got that boot off. Fire in the hole. Not seeing any spark. It's not a good sign. Okay, here's the other side.
Yeah, it looks like we're not getting spark for some reason. Not quite sure. What would that be? Okay, I think I'm gonna take off the cover here so I can make sure that my coils are not grounding out. <clears throat> I'm just gonna manually disconnect them and see if we get spark that way and maybe we can squirt some carb cleaner in there and get it to fire off. So I'm about out of time out here, so let's see how quick we can do it. All right, so I took the cover off, um, got all that stuff off because there's two fan shrouds in there and the under one is bolted to this and it holds down the shroud like here. So anyway, I don't know why the grounds were run over here, but I put them back here. They should be good. Let's crank it over again, just a little more, make sure it's still not sparking and then we will disconnect the coils and check again. No spark. Okay, so let's get this thing disconnected. Ah, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Got it. We are no longer grounding out the coil, so this thing should fire. Woohoo! It actually fired up there. So, the coils are good. The system is good. It's just getting the power right. So, there is something that's grounding it out, so it's probably a safety switch, which could be. This one, which has been chopped off, could be those ones. Um, I'm not sure this is... Hey. That clutch is working. We just heard this thing fire up off of one cylinder. So I'm going to disconnect this one over here as well. There we go. Now, um, I can put the spark tester on the other side. Make sure this coil is working as well. Okay, that's on. Gonna keep my arm clear of the flywheel. And yeah, let's um, take the spark tester off, put the wires back on, squirt some carb cleaner in there, and see what happens. It's pretty exciting. Let's see it run. See if this thing will actually fire off and run just a little bit better. So all right there, I think that sums it up for part one here on the Husqvarna Z246. Actually, it's sort of part two because we picked it up a long time ago and that was in a video. You can check that out. This motor was free. It was a cool story. Um, it was just a neat place to pick it up. Yeah, it fires up. I think we've got some electrical stuff we're gonna have to work through here. And you never know, the carburetor may need a, a good clean out as well. So we didn't try the fuel system at all and we kind of bypassed a lot of electrical stuff. And yeah, I know I said I might check the compression. I did not check the compression. I got lazy and I ran out of time, but it runs, so that's a really good sign. So anyway, as always, thanks for watching us here on Garage Story, and uh, keep making stories, and stay safe, and we'll catch you on the next one.